Hello and welcome to this Mithra Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is lecture 26, Implementing Convexity, the final one of our convexity and duration lectures. Hooray, I can hear you calling out there. OK, let's get right down to it. You might want to watch the previous lecture if some of the details on the left here don't look familiar. So we're going to first of all calculate convexity. Now we did all the mechanics of this in the previous lecture. So for anyone who hasn't seen the previous lecture, it's probably a good idea to watch that now before you watch this one. OK, we're going to use my special VBA function I wrote because there isn't an inbuilt convexity function in Excel. So we're going to use Andy's convexity function. Again, all details available in the previous lecture. We need four inputs to this, so we're going to need the yield to maturity and then the coupon rate and then the bond maturity period, which is three years. This just works for annual bonds, by the way, this function and then face value and brackets and we're done. So that gives us that particular figure of 9.20462. Then we're going to put in a yield to maturity change. We'll keep it nice and straightforward. We'll just put 1% in there and then we'll do the duration adjustment. Now the duration adjustment's fairly straightforward. It's just going to be equal to the price of the bond multiplied by the actual duration and then that's going to be multiplied by the percentage change and that gives us the adjustment we'll need to make for duration for predicting price changes in bonds when the interest rates go up or when the interest rates go down. Now the convexity adjustment is slightly funkier. Here we're going to say it's equal to the price and then it's multiplied by the convexity adjustment but then here's the funky bit it's got a power of the interest rate and that's going to be squared. So it's going to be quite a small effect because of this squaring. OK, there we go. So that's nine cents or thereabouts. Now we can start using these two very small adjustments to start predicting what will happen to bond prices when interest rates change. OK, so let's put the yield, current yield to maturity, in, which is 8% for the standard rate. Now at the standard rate, the duration, the actual and the convexity adjustment will all be the same. So let's just put in the same price each time. And that's just going to be the basic bond price here on the left. So, OK, now what we'd like to do is we'd like to take interest rates down by that much. So nice and simple in our little table here, that's going to be equal to the 8% current yield to maturity take away the possible reduction in interest rates to 7%. And obviously we'd like to do that with the interest rates going up too. So this is going to be equal to 8% plus the interest rate adjustment. OK, now let's see what the actual prices would be if interest rates change. If interest rates change to 7%, what would the actual price go to? Uh, we would never normally do this in the real world because there's an infinity of potential interest rate changes and there's an infinity of bonds and there'd be an infinity of computer data centers having to calculate this stuff and it would be far too expensive. There'd be more computers in the world than there would be uh, microbes to calculate these things. So we don't actually do this in real life. But just for the sake of a yardstick in this lecture, let's actually work it out. So that's going to be equal to minus one multiplied by the present value of the interest rate which is there and then the number of periods which is the bond maturity because it only works for annual bonds in this case then the payment which is there and then the face value which is the face value which is that value there and then which is going to be standard so it's going to be the end of the period and that gives us 105.25 which is three dollars or so higher or two dollars 75 ish higher than the price at the moment at 8%. Of course, because when interest rates go down, bond prices go up for reasons we've explained in many earlier videos. Let's do the actual price then if interest rates go up. Now the price should go down. Let's just see what it would go to. This is going to be equal to minus one multiplied by the present value of, let's try saying that first thing in the morning, the rate, which is 9%, and the number of periods, which is the bond maturity, and then the payment, which is the coupon payment. And then we've got the future value, which is the face value. And it's going to be the typical zeroth thing. So that's going down to 100 there, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If the coupon rate is 9%, the interest rate goes to 
surely that makes sense that this price is the face value of $100. Okay, let's have a look then and see what duration would predict these changes to be. By the way, I'm going to highlight all of these formulas later on. So you'll see them all later on. And we've got this line here, this nice gray line for the actual prices. You can't see it because it's so small, but there's actually some convexity in there. We might see that if we put this to 30 years and we put this change to 2%. And you see there's a subtle, very subtle amount of convexity in there. Okay, let's go back down to three years and 1%. Super. Right, now, to get the predicted price using the duration adjustment, when interest rates go down, bond prices should go up. So there's the actual bond price now. If interest rates go down to 7%, they go down by 1%, the price should go up by that much. So let's just see what that would be. That's equal to that plus the adjustment. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So it's going to buy $2.75. Okay, so it's not too far away, look, from the actual price. It's only five cents away from the actual price. That's pretty good. So for small durations, small maturities, small interest rate changes, durations pretty good. Now let's look at it the other way. So when interest rates go up, the price should go down. So let's just see what happens. There's the price. And then we take away the adjustment this time. Okay, 99.95. Now you can see it's not perfectly accurate. It should be 100 at 9% with a coupon of 9%. The bond should be 100 yeah, the duration prediction is five cents out, so it's lost a little bit of funkiness there. Now let's see what the convexity adjustment would do. So let's put the convexity adjustment on. So this is going to be equal to that. We add on the duration adjustment. We always add on the convexity adjustment because it's always a positive adjustment. Remember, as interest rates go down and down and down and down, they have more and more and more effects. So convexity will always be adding on more than you think. And as interest rates go up, the convexity effect gets less and less and less and less. So again, we need to add on cash to prevent the price change going down so fast. Hopefully that all makes sense. You can see again, the price is slightly higher. Now, if you look very, very closely at this, we can see there's a subtle difference here at the ends here. We'll magnify these changes very, very shortly. Let's just do the final one. This is where things get interesting. Here, we start with the basic price and then we take off the duration effect. But then we add back the convexity effect because as interest rates go up and up and up, they have less and less and less effect. So we shouldn't make the change down quite so big. Okay, now it's still not perfect. You can see it should be 100. But it has come back in a positive direction. Now, we can't really see very much on this graph at the moment. So I am going to make this 30 years again. And I am going to make it a 2% change, a really big change. And now we can start to see some kind of differentiation in these figures. The real figures are in grey here. This line here is the actual kind of prices as what the bonds should be. The blue line is what duration says, which is a straight line. And you can see here at these, these ends, these tails, I won't say fat tails, then it's a little bit off. But the convexity adjustment has made a bend in the blue line. And it looks a little bit more like the gray line. Now these convexity adjustments are very, very subtle. And here's a really important point. You can see here that they're not perfection. Perfection would be if the orange line lay on top of the gray line. If the orange line here lay on top of the gray line here, but it doesn't. So never be fooled into thinking that convexity adjustments are reality. They are just often a better approximation than just using the duration adjustment. They are not perfection. That's a really important point. And it only really is useful once we get to very big interest rate changes and we're getting into very long maturities with very high durations, a duration here of 11. So 
only when the durations start getting really big and the interest rate changes start getting really big do we actually need or require or see any difference from convexity and here's the really important point convexity is not reality let's just finish off with a 50-year bond there are some government bonds which go to 50 years even though those governments won't exist in 50 years and you can see there's some pretty big changes here but again convexity is not perfection it's better at this end it's not so good at this end it does have the curve of reality but the curve isn't quite perfect anyway let's just put all the formula in here so you can see what's going on so we'll just do all that now for you there's the duration calculation there's the special function i wrote in the previous lecture in vba which you can see in the previous lecture uh, there's nothing needed there let's just put these really important formulas in for you so the convexity adjustment and the duration adjustment there they are we might need to just move those over a little bit squeeze everything else in once we have those adjustments we can then just work out the adjustments so when interest rates go down then we add on the duration adjustment when interest rates go up we take off the duration adjustment with convexity we do exactly the same for the duration bits but we always add on the convexity thing you can see here that we're adding on convexity there and we're adding on convexity there but in one of them we're adding on the duration and in the other we're taking off the duration adjustment and i'll just put these formulas in i'll just put one of them in stop it getting really messy just for fun so there we go i think we've probably got enough formulas on the screen now to to cook a few geese okay see you next time